Hello, and welcome to the official podcast featuring four people that you have grown up with, you've grown to love, you've grown to know, you've grown to hug and kiss. In order, in terms of age, we have Jackson, Chris, Kaya, and myself. And joining us this week is another host, Charlie, because I tricked you. Our guest is actually Chris of Explosive. Cyanide and happiness. Many great things that you've laughed at on the internet. Chris, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you've laughed at it, you know, that's debatable. I, I, I appreciate it all the same. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course, man. You're more than welcome to come on. And you're here. I don't know why I like, extended an invite <laughs> despite you already being here. I guess that's become just such a, a stock response because usually... People are like, oh, you should get this person on and that person on. My response is always, well, they're more than welcome. But you're here, Chris, and we're, we're thankful you're here. You're always more than welcome to be oh, here. Oh, yeah. Feels good. Feels good. Appreciate it. Speaking of feeling good, YouTube's really fucking you guys pretty hard over there, huh? Oh, man. Yeah. No, we're, our colon's hanging outside of our body because of YouTube. Oh. Uh, we've been reamed pretty hard. And, uh, you know, like a lot of it, uh, it, it's not the only part of what we do. It's just... Uh, something that we like to do and uh we keep going we've got a lot of talented people we work with and stuff but oh yeah youtube is uh is raw dogging us for sure hmm. and now you've mm-hmm. gone to patreon for support is that turning out well for you is that going to be enough to sustain the animation division and keep some some good humble men and women fed yeah i think so I, I fucking love patreon and uh you know we kind of we kind of prefer it that way anyway i mean youtube's gonna go through the crazy shit that it does and we don't want to kind of change everything that we're doing just because it's going through growing pains and going through puberty and all that. Mm. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Patreon is great for animators and people like that where they can't rely on YouTube for consistent income and reliability. I like Patreon. I don't yeah, not them. at all. No. Nah. <laughs> yeah, definitely Patreon's not great. reliable. No, not at all. They're more reliable than other venues. I can think more? of a couple things. I can think of a couple things that are a little less reliable than Patreon. Yes, for sure. but they're as- you know, aspiring to be less reliable, and in the future, you know, I mean, you oh, see yeah. all the posts they make already about, hey, we're gonna, you know, get rid of hateful people and this and that, and eh, give it a couple of years, they're Has- gonna be YouTube. Mm. A little different for Patreon, though, because when you watch something on YouTube, you're not directly paying for it. I don't think yeah. Patreon would just kick paying people off, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I can agree Who with knows? that. <laughs> we don't know. Do you, do you, do you know something, Kaya? <laughs> He's got a man on the inside. Kaya owns Patreon. I secretly. know that, unfortunately, these days in Silicon Valley, politics goes over profits. Unfortunately, I, I wish they all just cared about the money. We make money. If there was all to it, then yeah, I wouldn't be worried, but I am. Yeah, and all we yeah. ever talk about is politics on this show. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> but politics. Definitely. <laughs> it's like Crossfire. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So, so Chris, I was uh, I was reading up on the, the sordid and secret history behind Cyanide and Happiness. I discovered Ooh, yes. that uh, you started it as a 16-year-old little wee lad sitting in your room with your crayons when you had strep throat. <laughs> And I just, yeah, I I just mean, want to know uh, your thought process at the time. Did you think maybe like while you were doing it, was it just something you wanted to fire and forget just a little doodle to pass the time where you were sick or kind of like what, what kind of transitioned it into this big conglomerate of cartoons and merch and card games and all this shit? Do you think? Also, are you feeling better now? <laughs> <laughs> Chris has been very ill for the last what, like 12 years. Yeah. It's just been getting worse. I mean, I feel better physically, but I feel way worse mentally. And uh, yeah, like um, it would, technically I was about uh, 14 or 15 when the comic started, but I was running a shitty .tk website called Kamikaze, which was the name of the comic at the time, and then uh, kind of saw that a couple other things had that name, so got rid of it. But yeah, I had, I had, I was still sh- fucking, fucking sick with strep throat, and <laughs> basically started i was i was kind of doing animation for hire for a bunch of like rich kids back then oh and yeah wait, wait, right? what does that mean rich kids like, like you would the, have the cool kids in the neighborhood kind of thing you draw stuff for them or yeah rich people you'd find you'd find these rich kids and they would be like 15 16 and they'd be webmasters and they know they wanted to make a animation website but they wouldn't animate themselves and so they would get 
they would get people like me to come in and just make bullshit. And as as sort of a break from doing animation, I started doing comics be like due to like being sick and it's much easier to draw a comic than it is to draw 2000 3000 frames of an animation. Frames, yeah. Yeah. So just kind of did that to, to take a break and uh, kind of enjoy myself. And I was drawn like with an optical mouse. I was drawing these comics uh, in Flash, and uh, they uh, I would I would make like four or five a day and laugh and be like, "Ha, huh, that's stupid." And then I wouldn't show anyone out of shame, and <laughs> basically <laughs> s- started optical uh, mouse. Were those the uh, with the ball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God, you dropped two very nostalgic references now one is the dot tk domain which oh, the, i would have always uh, you know that was one of those free website domains right yeah that's right yeah oh, good old I was, days right when you're 14 like yeah you don't give a shit i'll have a dot tk a dot xyz whatever <laughs> yeah, oh, well, absolutely i used, oh, I used to love those yeah Man. the free websites Wait, who, which one of you boys remembers Pixo? Do you guys remember Pixo by chance at the dot Pixo? No. I don't think so. Really? That was all the rage in my elementary. Well, I guess it would have been middle school now. In my middle school, we used to make dot Pixos. It was a website building and hosting platform, kind of similar to like a Weebly, mm. but a lot oh, more Weebly. primitive. Yeah. So you could you couldn't find the site through like uh, whatever search engine there is. It's privatized until you buy it. Because that's what I Weebly think does. so. I I don't know if it was quite like that back in two thousand five, but I'm pretty sure you could still find it if you typed it in on the search engine. I'm not positive, but I don't think anyone was looking for mine, which was coldflames.pixo.com. <laughs> <laughs> what was on it? Oh man, cold flames. Cold yeah. flames. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> Pixo is very primitive. Was that your web handle? No, I just thought, I just thought it was a really cool name because like the dichotomy between like cold and flames. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's, it, no one's ever thought of that before. It's you don't crazy. have to explain it. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that thought it was so good. I think but, you're onto something. What whatever happens to all the free domain websites like Weebly? You know the block spots, the Pixel Angel mm-hmm. Fire. They That's all kind of got around. crushed under the uh, conglomerate of. WordPress, I think, they hold a monopoly now on the free, yeah. free block stuff. I think, I think so. they've, yeah. I think they've like transitioned into more like commercial stuff, like paid. You got to pay for it, and then they just set you up, and then use a .dot com. I think like, what I, well, no, because that wouldn't have made a difference. The only people who ever used those services were teenagers who didn't have any money to begin with. They still wouldn't have any money today. So I think what happened is social media replaced those websites. You know, why would you have a Weebly if you can just make a Twitter? Right. Yeah, there. I think a lot of the the, the social networking and uh, Squarespace kind of stuff came and squashed, squashed that shit out. Mm. Oh, yeah. Squarespace is still massive. Oh, yeah. That still exists, kind of, right? In a yeah, way. They're, they're big, yeah. So anyway, Chris, you said you were embarrassed of your, your beautiful art. Yeah, quite embarrassed. Um, why? Why? It's beautiful. Uh, just because I thought I was the only person who'd find it funny. And uh, I was like, ah, eh, no one wants to see this shit. They want to see my uh, uh, stupid animations instead. And mm. just kind of, uh, yeah, when I was sick, I had enough time to, you know, make like six a day. And then, and then after a couple months, started showing it around to a couple personal friends and... You know, they kept me as a friend, so couldn't couldn't have been too bad. <laughs> and time. yeah, and yeah, from there started just kind of building the website. From there, I was part of those. I'm not sure if you guys remember shit like stickdeath.com and oh, stuff like course. that. Ooh, baby, oh, stick figure death theater, stick SFDT. figure death theater, stick page, yeah. shit like that. Oh, that was fuck yeah, time. loved all dude. That. My my first email was at sfd sfdt.com. That was my very first email address on the internet. Oh man. That's yeah. so nostalgic. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, really. That's a big right. throwback. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fights. You have any uh you have any you have any favorites from that era? Any fond memories for any cartoons from back then or things that Oh you hell remember? yeah. Yeah, uh Ed Scudder did some really kick ass stuff on there. Um and he he went on to make dick figures. Oh dick fu- figures, okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> There's a couple. Who could forget? <laughs> Who could well, I mean, forget? Well, Dick Figures is super popular right now. Yeah, it's a, it's 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 good stuff, and the animation's great, and yeah, uh, yeah cool dudes, and yeah, but you know, I was a big fan of those kind of animations, and you know, when you're when you're in that part of your life where cool flames is a cool thing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you want to see animated violence all day. The one that. Uh, Go ahead, Charlie. I was just going to say, I hope that's not still off because it certainly would not have <laughs> aged well. The The background was the 50 cent Get Rich or Die Trying album cover repeated like a checker pattern. <laughs> and it was laid, just laden with um, Lost Prophets music videos because I used to love their music. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, I, I know I've mentioned this, but the lead singer of Lost Prophets, Ian um, McRapist or whatever, he's in jail for 30 years <laughs> for... Yeah, for raping, uh, like, children and stuff. Well, so children's being generous. It was babies. Yeah. Oh, so you're familiar with him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So let's hope. For the, I'm more familiar Chris with that than his music. Prophets fan. <laughs> <laughs> what was your pick, so for Ian? God, man. I really wish I could find it, though. I'd be very curious to see exactly how it looked like at the time. Yeah. It's the kind of stuff you'd want to take down if you ever just uh, went for, a, I don't know, career publicly. Any mm-hmm. sort of a public figure. Like, imagine if Oprah had an old Pixel page where she <laughs> just swoons over Ian the baby rapist. <laughs> I, God, imagine if she Oprah might. picks a page in general, it'd be a fucking disaster. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's rich enough to just buy Google and take it down. Uh, yeah. yeah. She could enough. hide the search. <laughs> yeah. I'd be left to the wolves, though. <laughs> God. Right, and do you guys, uh, by chance, remember Stick Suicide? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. Of course. absolutely. Oh man, Chris, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with a big one, one that's gonna start uh, spark nostalgic memories for people listening. Do you remember Zhao Zhao? Yeah, of course. Oh, Zhao Zhao was my fucking bread and butter as a kid. I would get home from school and watch every single one back to back for like four hours a day. Oh man, same here. He was like the he he was he was the like. So the the mysterious one he wouldn't say yeah. anything he wouldn't be part of any of the communities and then he'd come yeah. in and just rip yeah. everyone's ass open with this amazing amazing professional quality animation i think the only thing he ever did in terms of reaching out was at the end of one or two of them he just put an email address and that was it <laughs> just this public like at geo city's email or some shit oh geo city yeah. <laughs> this is great. oh my god yeah <laughs> these are tickling me so hard oh yeah wow before Have, audience are gonna be like, what are these like ancient hieroglyphs? What are they talking about? <laughs> Geo cities? What the fuck? I hardly know. Did her. they mean Geostorm the movie? <laughs> <laughs> Before we move on though from the topic, you Zhao Zhao is a good one, but do you guys remember Oscar Johansson's Castle series by chance? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're actually yeah. still in touch with Oscar. He's yeah, he's t- talented as fuck, man. Oh yeah. really? He's is he still doing those kind of things? I haven't I haven't seen uh, what his uh, animation is for a while, but uh, I imagine he's he's gotten more than a uh, comfy spot yeah, doing animation. Charlie, he's still putting out stick kung fu movies in Flash <laughs> with with stock <laughs> Adobe Flash sound effects. He's not giving up on the dream yet, baby. <laughs> yeah, man. really dramatic stuff. Oh, and I started putting some of those comics up on uh, the Stick Suicide forums when I start started getting the courage to put him up in in the general public and then uh rob denbleicher contacted me over msn messenger Ooh. another throwback that's oh, right we're oh, old internet you, you just gave me fucking vietnam flashbacks charlie you had cool flames dot tk oh that my picture, uh, yeah my my msn messenger name was x the shadow slayer x <laughs> <laughs> not kidding I, shadow when I was slayer 12, it was the coolest goddamn thing <laughs> MSN has got to be laundering Russian oligarch money by now. Why would that website be up otherwise? Still, it's come not, on. It's not up, is it? Did yeah, it is. Removed? It's no. still up. It's still yeah. up. Yeah, Jackson, not, not the fire messenger up. part of it though. No, well, okay, the messenger isn't, but fire up Internet Explorer and the landing page is MSN News. Well, I think, I think, uh, <laughs> I think that kind of goes with AOL as well. AOL's still up and running because a lot of old people still use it as like both their primary source for email and news. That's a myth. The AOL's still up because they bought um, who the fuck did they buy? It wasn't Verizon, Disney. but they bu- they bought some massive company AOL that keeps them Verizon. Afloat. That seems 
It was something. I actually think it was Verizon. Really? Yeah, it was it was Verizon. AOL bought Verizon. How, how did the AOL get the money to do that? <laughs> From yeah, all the did AOL, all... the first internet company, get all the money. I'm sorry. Yeah. I am so. You're I am an idiot. So, no. AOL I'm, was bought by Verizon. I, yep. I am so fucking sorry. It was the exact opposite. <laughs> I was about AOL, to say AOL was purchased by Verizon. Uh, for, uh, AOL, thank you so much for buying us. You, the premier 1999 login internet service, with all your billions <laughs> of dollars left over. <laughs> We were all a little sad when AIM died. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rest, rest yeah. in peace, cool sports. Oh, man. AIM, AIM was another one. I think my name was uh, Death Clock Rocks 66 or something. Oh, nice. I, I had, one six short. A, yeah, I had, I had a new edgy screen name for every single messenger. <laughs> Mine always just made me sound like girls, so my friends would convince me to change it, but I just kept me- making the most feminine ones. The first one was Cool Sports 81, and then I was Sporty Shorty. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you there. The My first Yahoo skill. name was half a nip. Do you have any embarrassing handles or names that you've used for stuff, Chris? Yeah, well, yeah, my Yahoo handle was half a nip, which uh, is ambiguous to say the least. But that's at, cool. That's yeah, that's cool. Cute. Anything anyone said that's here. That's not that bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you guys know any? I know a guy who still has his Netscape account. Ooh. And email. Oh shit! Netscape. I've never met anybody who can top that unless some sort of a mummy came back to life. Oh, I can't Flexed top that. mailbox or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, half a nip was one. I remember on SFDT, I was El Taco. And, uh, you know, not that badass. Not as badass as Shadow Slayer or oh, Cool Flames. You want to you hear real badassery? When I was, uh, oh, God, I think I was 11. I went to a land center for the first time ever. So... <laughs> <laughs> so but it was it wasn't it wasn't like oh yeah let's meet up and go here it was like you you paid for like a day pass and they let you use like consoles and computers and shit like it was an arcade but they had like computer <laughs> setups and shit so i went to the front the first time i ever got there and they went all right you need a username to log into our system and i uh i i thought they're standing there for like 30 minutes eventually i went uh master cheese and the man was like okay and i was like it's like master chief but funny <laughs> and, and to that day, ever since I went back there, that guy just did not want to talk to me. And that was it. <laughs> well, that's probably because you were 12. That too. I mean, I, I don't know. As a 12-year-old, I thought Master Cheese was the funniest fucking thing that's ever been invented. He just didn't get how cool it was. He probably had some sort of name like, uh, I don't know, uh, Dragon Reamer or something. And he's you like, this guy doesn't know how to make handles. The Dragon Reamer. Ooh. Oh, damn. Hey, do you guys uh, remember Whistle? Oh, yeah, dude. Whistle, that was all the rage. It still is. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh, <laughs> what is Whistle? <laughs> Charlie, you are the one who has actually factually used this on their dog. Go ahead. Well, yeah. Chris, Chris do, you have a, do you have a pet? Yeah, I have a dog. Yeah, exactly. Are you familiar with Whistle? No, no. <laughs> How often do, do you, does your dog get lost? How often does my dog get lost? Yeah. Uh, not, none so far as, far as I'm aware. Well, then you sure could use Whistle. Whistle is a device that attaches to your pet's collar and allows you to track their location and activity from an app on your phone. So you'll never lose your dog. It's super white light, uh, lightweight, not white light. <laughs> <laughs> super lightweight, waterproof, and has a rechargeable battery that lasts up to 10 days. So you can rest assured that your dog's going nowhere without you knowing. Uh, Whistle uses GPS and AT&T cellular network, and everything is beautiful. Charlie, you've used Whistle. How How is it? Yeah, I've been using Whistle since before they decided to sponsor the podcast. Tiana and I really like it. We can always monitor how much activity Tetra is getting to make sure she's getting her daily exercise and her bicep curls and such. And mm. if she ever does get lost, we can easily find her. So it's wow. Very, I'd highly recommend it. That's amazing. I'm going to get my dog lost now. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you can easily <laughs> find him. Go to whistle.com and use code official, and you'll get yeah. your dog back. <laughs> you won't get your dog back until after you do that. We're holding it hostage. <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast right now, check your dog. You won't find him because we have him, and you have to go to whistle.com. <laughs> use code official to get $25 off a whistle device. Nate. That's right. Thank you. Can I use it to find other dogs? Like if I want more? <laughs> like a dating app. Is your dog yeah. not working out for you? Do you want a new one? Whistle. I guess you could use this for nefarious activities, like attach yeah. the tracker to a car if you suspect your girlfriend is cheating on you or something. I mean, I'll, I'll <laughs> tell you right now, if I have kids, I'm slapping one on each of them. 
<laughs> yeah, bug your girlfriend with your your dog yeah. and whistle. Yeah. So, Chris, the uh, the the cyanide and happiness community has kind of well, not exploded, but it exploded at one point and has kind of continued to grow at that at that nice rate. How have you found uh, the success of it since you started it when you were like sixteen or so? Mm-hmm. Has how how's it been? Uh, it's very surreal. It's surreal every day. I I just I'm I'm a fucking junkie for making stuff and mm-hmm. uh, just creating shit and entertaining people and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty great that we can try different things and whatnot. You know, we went from being a comic to doing animation to doing tabletop games and video games and podcasts and all sorts of that shit. So that's the kind of that's that's <clears throat> the kind of rotation I like to be in, where I'm just constantly making stuff and. It's it's kick ass to have that kind of support, and it's I never expected it by any means. And none of us did, and uh, we also didn't expect it to be some sort of um, I want to say threshold of of uh, offensive humor. We just kind of found out that we're offensive. <laughs> everything is, yeah, yeah, everything, yeah. Is, everything is to someone. And yeah, exactly. Difficult not to find out with everybody telling you when they're offended. Yeah. yeah, but it's great. I, I kind of wish that we <laughs> we got as much hate mail as we used to. Oh, has uh, it gone down recently? It has yeah. a bit, quite a bit. Uh, recently, we made a poster that's entirely made out of real hate mail that we received. And oh, nice. yeah, but it's just a little too far, few and far between. People kind of get what we're doing now. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. now you need to now spice get, it up a bit. Exactly. Yeah, we need to really start gunning for people. Can we yeah. can we help get some hate for the Explosum guys, please? They're hardworking men. Can you hate on them a little bit more? Every, Every, day, the right. Every day, innocent content creators go without receiving their recommended dose of hate mail. You out there can help. Just find a creator like Chris or someone you like. Send them a fucking email or two about how much you despise them. That's all and we just ask. trying to offload some of his hate. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I mean, the bully hunters told me that people receive up to 3 million messages, hate <laughs> mails, a minute. <laughs> Yet Chris here is saying he doesn't get that many. This is weird. Yeah, according to the little, bully hunter, Kaya, according to the bully hunter's math, over six billion women are harassed every day. Well, that's the problem. I'd be getting more hate mail if the fucking bully hunters weren't around. <laughs> <laughs> They're protecting you too damn hard. Yeah, really. They're, They're too, too good, good at their job. Oh, Everyone's too, too scared. Good at selling headphones. They don't Man. understand that bullying is a game. The bully hunters with the infinity stones. Oh no! Oh, oh shit! It's not a world Peace I want to be in. <laughs> you'd get snapped out of existence my friend you know the statistics eight Don't out of every it. three women are harassed daily mm-hmm. on video games by other women they need to stop i'm one oh. of them here's my story <laughs> buy my headphones <laughs> <laughs> chris speaking of uh the bully hunters and other great misdoings of the internet has there been anything on the internet that's lately caught in your eye something that you've been following getting juicy gossip from well um i guess it depends which avenue you're talking about i i couldn't help but be curious why there has been such a wave of incestual porn going on mm. wait, oh yeah you're wait, right there is oh yeah it's all turned into like incest stuff mm-hmm. yeah like uh, uh, oh step why is this so common knowledge do i have not think- heard of this do you think that that's the uh, like the new wave of taboo that the internet jumps on? Like for a while, it was vor, and everyone was obsessed with vor, and there was right. all these when? other like trends of taboo porn, and now incest. Oh, is you just mean kind people are a... just talking about incest more? Yeah, yeah, people are making it, uh, talking about popular. it, throwing it around. Yeah. Well, what drives me crazy is that you'll just have a regular, average, honest to god porn, and then they'll just title it like it's an incestual porn, but there's no setup or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It'll just how say that. Know, how are you meant to know that like, all this is incestuous? Do they show like their birth certificates and shit no. like that? <laughs> here's my driver's license. Here's my yeah. sister's. That's the whole point. It's all make-believe, which I don't know how they can even get any enjoyment out of pretending. Yeah. Right. Kind of boring. Oh. I want the I want the, the the video to open up with a, a panning shot of all the family photos on the <laughs> mantle. An ancestry report. Yeah, see, exactly. See, that still could be faked. That could still be photoshopped. I want to see them both come out of the birth canal, and then okay. watch them eighteen grow years. Up. Yeah, watch like them twins? grow up in front of me like a boyhood. So it's legal. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then get with the fucking. Then I'll know it's true. Yeah, that's that's where we want to be. We're, we're here now. That's where we want to get to with the it's incest like porn. A <laughs> fucked up version of the Truman Show, where they also have his sister and try to set them up. <laughs> uh. 
Jeez, that probably is where society's heading. It just yeah. always seems like uh, the internet kind of latches onto, I don't know, whatever's taboo or icky and kind of purports it as the worst thing ever, but that just causes it to spread even further. Like with the yeah. whole incest porn, everyone's like, oh man, this incest stuff is gross. And like, oh, brother and sister. But then it becomes kind of wrapped around on itself and now everyone wants the incest porn. Who I, I still haven't met any person who's yeah, like openly really... craving incest porn. Well, I mean, Chris oh, said it best them. if you, you just, just don't know. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you've met them. You just didn't know you met them. It could be anyone know. on this call. Are you trying to say something, Chris? <laughs> I, I'm i saying nothing, I'll, I'm, but I'm feeling a lot. I mean, I think you yeah. said it best, though. If you go to most big porn websites now, not every video, but every page, you'll see three or four that just says, like, brother fucks sister. My, yeah, I fucked true. my mother and regret it. You know, like, shit like that. So they must be getting, like, clicks and stuff then, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's the, the, it's the hot topic. Topic. But the people watching it, they have it can't be that they're actually imagining themselves in that situation. Yeah, that I think you're right. People cannot have hot sisters. I, well, I, I, I don't think people are demanding the incest. What I think is happening is that uh, the porn is porn. I think people just look at thumbnails. And then, you know, if all porn was labeled incestual, then people are still going to go to it. Mm -hmm. And well, yeah. so it's a bit recursive. Incestuous partners are just like naturally hot. Yeah. I think that uh, I think it's a misunderstanding of the fantasy. I think most of the people who want the incest porn don't have siblings or any kind of that relationship. So they imagine. <laughs> well, no, I'm dead serious. <laughs> I wish I had a brother to fuck. That's exactly what I think it is. That is one hundred percent what I think Mommy, it is. Mommy, I want a little brother. Can I suck his dick? I'm I'm not kidding in any capacity. I think it's people who go, man. If I had a hot <laughs> sister, I'd fuck the shit out of her. I think oh, it's more just the if, taboo, the taboo of it. Like, yeah, it has to oh, be the that taboo because loud. everybody has a mother. They still want to fuck mothers, apparently. Yeah, well, but not ooh, everyone ooh. is a hot mother. Yeah. They go, man, if my mom was super hot, I, you know. <laughs> all I want, <laughs> all I want is a hot twin that was born at the exact same time as me and squeezed out that birth canal at the exact same time as I did that I could, I could turn to and say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We're, we're, we're hooking up. Yeah. I think yeah. that's exactly what it is. <laughs> All I had was half-sisters and half-brothers, so... Uh, Have you fucked any out. of them? No, not yet, man. Uh, They're playing hard to get. That's not hot. <laughs> that's like half-incest. So the is this whole, thing, this whole thing is your scheme to subtly drop hints that you dig the incest idea? <laughs> you want them to listen to this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, if they hear that, you know, hey, uh, you know, send me a text. No, I uh, I just honestly when I see it, when I see the titles and stuff, I'll avoid it. I get a little pissed off, you know. I'll I'll think that looks like a perfectly normal fine porn, a a, a nice straightforward American porn. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, you know, you'll see the title, and I don't want to click that because I always think of, uh, I always think of the service provider and the kind oh, of like, pages oh, yeah, that they're yeah. saying. And I say I don't want them to think that I'm gonna stoop to that level. Mm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go look at at this uh, public orgy. Do you or this uh, triple fisting? Do you still do the thing <laughs> where even though you're on your personal computer that no one else ever uses ever or even looks at, you still open like private mode to browse porn and shit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, there's going to be that one time like a family asks to use your computer or something like that. And then I don't know. Exactly. Plus, even right. if they don't just stop. It's one of those things like, you know, even if you're not getting laid currently, are you still going to change your underwear every week? Yeah, you still should. <laughs> <laughs> it's gross otherwise. It's, it's that basic level of human self-care. Mm -hmm. If you just don't have that Pornhub search results in your browsing history every time you go to type in something normal. Right. Yeah. Also, you got that the, the issue of your autofill filling up and clouding everything. Oh, you're trying yeah. to go to Reddit and you're on RedTube and then you forgot where you're trying to get in the first place. Yeah. You want to go to Reddit and then you end up in the very wrong place. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know. Sometimes you know when you're when you're not looking for porn, you you don't have time for that. <laughs> you, see, a, you just gotta jerk off, even uh, even if you're on the subway. I'm in a hurry. Uh, cute cats on Reddit. It'll have to do. <laughs> yeah, you can you can turn Reddit into porn if you if you kind of type in RedTube and end up on Reddit. You can still find what you need. Oh, if, if easily. Reddit's yeah, like yeah. one of the biggest porn sites in the world, basically. Life finds <laughs> it's gonna it for everything. Yeah. Speaking what of a, you go ahead. What what I I am curious what subreddits you go to for porn. 
Oh, I, 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 do, can, I can recommend a good one. Just lesbians. Public Freakout's yeah. good. Yeah, lesbians. Le- just r slash le- lesbians? Yeah, they're very active. They're a passionate group of people. Sometimes Katie from Pornhub's on there. She's not acting in anything, but she'll comment saying, keep up the good work, girls, or something in the comments. That's, That's good. Nice. It's yeah, nice to have a... Has she, she ever acted in anything? I don't think so. I'd be interested to know that. So are you guys worried about the whole <laughs> deep fake AI shit? Because... I'm sure you've seen the Google presentation by now where yeah. they have their <laughs> yeah. artificial intelligence make a phone call. It's almost indistinguishable from oh. a human. Yeah, not only that, it, it adds ums and pauses into its speech. That freaked yeah. me the fuck out. Yeah. I think, I, I don't know too, I mean, obviously it has a lot of effects with like a deep porn or deep fake porn thing because you could get the audio from the person. But someone sent me an email. Someone deep faked me onto some gay porn when I was giving a foot job. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that looks like I'm giving a foot job. That's dope. Yeah. Wait, was, I think that's pretty cool. Was it really yeah. accurate? Yeah, oh. it was It was re- It was was scarily accurate. It, it was oh. only a gift, though. Yeah. Like, they didn't do the whole video, so they didn't commit 100%, but I gave a foot job. If, if someone could deep fake me. Put it on uh, Pornhub. Yeah. If you, yeah, yeah, if you want to check out good porn subreddits, there was a whole subreddit for deep fake porn. Um, a lot well, of it got taken. Now. Yeah, and mm-hmm. a lot of it is kind of just floating on the internet. But if you can find some, that shit is scary. Yeah, yeah. it's it's one to one. Yeah, it's, it's scary at first. Yeah. You, like the Google call stuff and and uh, the deep fakes can be scary at first, but then you know they'll they'll get useful later. I mean, like oh, yeah. I would love if I could just set up a like. The Google, the Google call thing, and deep fake together. I'll never have to call my mom again. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the one that worried me. I was reading comments on the porn stuff because, like, I was like, "Well, while I'm jerking off, I may as well learn something." And uh, the one that scared me was someone said, <laughs> "What if you do this for like propaganda or political shit? Like, you take Putin and put him in a video where he's saying, like, I am now going to launch nukes at Siberia.' Like that shit scared me. Yeah." So I, I don't mean, know why he would launch nukes at his own places? But yeah, it was. I mean, I just spo- I said the first European country that came to mind. I won't lie. It's like an anime super genius move. I'm going to nuke my own country and draw them out of hiding. <laughs> they won't see that coming. Maybe well, at, at the end no. he said like, "And I'm going to pretend like it was you, America." <laughs> They're like, "What's this? A Skype call from Kim Jong Un? <laughs> this is going to be important. <laughs> I'm going to join." <laughs> But no, man, it's... Look, I was reading the uh, Unabomber's Manifesto the other day, and even he... Because if you're going to jerk gosh, off, you might as well learn something from it. Sorry, what? Because if you're going to jerk off, you might as well learn something from it. <laughs> yeah, Unabomber, no, man, but the Unabomber he, Manifesto. <laughs> say what you want, this man was really, really smart. You know, I don't agree with his conclusion. That his, his basic whole point... His end point was that we have to give up technology and go back to a na- natural way of living, almost like an Amish dude. But the points he makes along the way, back in 96, he argued that you cannot separate the bad parts of technology from the good. And I think this is just going to be another example of it. Just like the internet, right? The internet is immensely useful for us all. It ushered in a new age, you could say. But at the same time, ISIS can use it to recruit new people, right? It has its ups and downs. And I think the same thing is going to be true of all this new artificial intelligence Deep fish. Well, well, that's that's any kind of technology. Like you can use a stick for bad things and yeah. good things. Fire for good things, bad things. I'm everything. excited and scared. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's bad or I'm not saying we should like ban it. It's just it's something to think about. I'll tell you yeah. what we should ban though is subpar razors, Andrew. What do you think about that one? I think uh, that I'm not going to listen to you and I'm going to wait for the deep fake video of Barack Obama shilling out you, Dollar Shave Club. You can't deep fake such a smooth cut. <laughs> Tell him, Jackson. <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll deep fake for Jackson here. Dollar Shave Club <laughs> delivers everything you need to look, feel, and smell your bre- Your I almost said breast. Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> smell your breast. Chris, can I ask you a question? Please do. Do you have hair? Yeah, yeah, uh, I all do. Right. Does some of it go on your face? Yeah, quite a bit of it. Do you think that Dollar Shave Club would be the best place to get a razor for your face? I do, and I'm not kidding when I say that I do use Dollar Shave Club. Oh, hey. oh tell Big us about boy. it. Tell us about your experience. That's right. Um, well, Dollar Shave Club, sent, it, what it has done for me is give me plenty of razors and and plenty of plenty of blades for those razors where I'm never left wanting again. No longer will you have to stare at your reflection through the the thick glass at 
wal- your local Walmart <laughs> and have to annoy some Walmart fucking employee to come and unlock the case so you can have your razor and feel like an animal. No, 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 no. Not in the same line as ISIS, but Dollar Shave Club does do a good <laughs> job getting getting people on board, getting using the internet to get people supporting its product. And I'd have to say that I, I am an acolyte of the Dollar Shave Club, and I can't, I couldn't feel smoother. That, that smoother than a baby's that was bottom. better than any of us could have ever said it, so I'm going to move straight to the call to action. A great way to try a bunch of Dollar Shave Club's products for $5, just 5 bucks, not more, not less, $5, you can get the Daily Essentials Starter Set. It comes with a body cleanser, a one-wipe Charlie's, which are amazing butt wipes, the mm. world-famous shave butter, and the best razor, the six-blade executive. None of this two-bit bullshit dollar rust club garbage that they found and dug up for you. No, you get the premium top-tier six-blade executive. Keep the blades coming for a few more bucks a month. Add in shampoo, toothpaste. But where? Anything else you need, you could do it at dollarshaveclub.com slash official. Thank you for keeping me on track, Kaya. That's dollarshaveclub.com. <laughs> Slash Andrew can just rant about Dollar Shave Club for the rest of his life. Yeah, I, man, I want you to cut the fluff and give me the give me the URL, man. Where can I get shaved? <laughs> Dollarshaveclub.com slash official. That's right. Dollarshaveclub.com right, slash official. I could I could study the blade. These ads for fucking hours. Chris. Yes. We have <laughs> to ask this question. It's mandatory. Of course. And I feel like I'm the only one asking questions, but that's fine. Do you Lay it on me? Do you have any interesting masturbatory tales? Yeah, yeah. Well, man, I kind of, I kind of shot that off early with some of the incestual stuff, didn't I? It's Wait, a- so you do jack off to incest stuff? We knew it. It's not my choice. We I just kind of look at the thumbnails and kind of go by there. All right, we got the call. It's not your choice. Your sister just <laughs> keeps seducing you. <laughs> hey, she that's couldn't have possibly been that cute. <laughs> um, master, masturbatorial habits. Yeah, yeah. I got, a, I got a number. I got a couple. Sure. Um, What's your number? Something something I don't understand is the the whole into a tissue thing, or like into in I don't know like I don't Sucks. I don't it's it's I need something more sanitary so I usually just open a window. <laughs> <laughs> it's someone else's problem at that point. Yeah, I set it free. Uh, you're like I the say, guy who dumps yeah. the garbage in the street. Yeah, that's wait, me. Wait, so do you jack off out the window, or do you have like jack off into your hand and then like throw it out the window? Oh, out the window! I'm not touching that. That's gross. How do people not see you do this? What's that? What, what window is this? How, yeah, how do people not see this? Oh, what? it's the uh, the top window of uh, Big Ben. <laughs> Normally. Oh no! Oh, that poor guy down there. Oh, it's bird shit again. Damn it! Morning, right. Steve. Just getting rid of the morning waste. Most of it just kind of burns up in reentry. How high are you? Mm. Are you jacking <laughs> Pretty off on up the there. ISS? <laughs> when I get the chance. But uh, you can't really open a window very often over there, so I try to avoid that. <laughs> but yeah, you know. What coming on the ISS feels like. Oh, Jesus. Well, actually, I don't I don't think you can. Um, I think they said that in space. In your... Well, no, I think they said that in space, your blood flow can't properly maintain an erection. <gasps> oh. Really? Yeah. Dude, bummer. Wait, so- they're up there for months. You're yeah, telling they me they never orgasm? That has to hurt. That from what I've be. read, they're, yeah. yeah. That's going to be difficult. Like a wet dream or something, like their body's natural way of getting to come out of them. Right. They have to have like a NASA-sanctioned prostate massage or something. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, some sort of vacuum pump? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, your I don't know. That's going to be difficult. Extraction, you know, otherwise your balls will explode. Yes. And you got boobs in zero gravity, you know? That's pretty sweet. Oh, that's a good point. In zero G, every boob is perky. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, it's doing what all happens, sorts of tricks. What happens to your nuts when you're in zero G? Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. That's oh, all of the wrinkles need a brave, out. brave man to experiment. And I why, why isn't NASA, like, experimenting with this kind of stuff? They do the boring shit like science. Oh, you know they have to. They're just like keeping that tucked away in some filing cabinet. Like you see the red faces that people get when they're up in the ISS. You know, they get all the blood building up to their head and everything. Your mm-hmm. ball's got to be similar. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's a hundred percent. There's some like confidential like porn files from like the vile shit yeah. NASA astronauts have done up there. Oh yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I, someone I, get I those feel leaked, like, please. Uh, every astronaut has just rubbed up on each other naked, no matter what creed or nationality. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, they yeah, better. Yeah. I'm. Oh yeah. They'd be kind <laughs> of on, a. Could you that's what my like, taxpayer money is sitting going in towards. the pilot seat and just jacking off while looking at the planet. Oh, oh. oh nothing gets more <laughs> harder than space. You You're jerking off to everyone. Space Lord, right there. Oh man. That's, See, that's. That'd be, that's new heights, man. That's uh, you know, out 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 a tall window is not enough for me anymore. <laughs> so I want to I want to back into reality a bit here, Chris. How much of what you told us was real? I'm assuming the window part. Yeah, yeah, to an extent, a window, uh, a, like like a, a like a sink, stuff like that. You know, yeah. not I don't do the tissue Cause I, things because I want to know. I I get the sink. That's fine, but I'm just wondering how do you get away with the window. How do you get? Well, you close it when you're done, and then you just drown out everything. <laughs> that's the reaction of it. I mean, do you just while people are walking down the street just go morning? Like, well, how does this work? Uh, well, I close it high, so right? fast. Yeah, I close it so fast. I don't even think it's hit the ground yet. <laughs> oh, so you don't jerk off into an open window? You open the window right before ignition. Let me clarify that it's out a window, not into one. <laughs> it's just like a murder mystery. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. this is incomprehensible. Yeah. So, so hang on, what kind of a view does your window have? Are there other <laughs> tall buildings where people would have a good view, yeah. or is it like, uh, do you have some reasonable privacy? Uh, it's a kind of reasonable privacy. Uh, mm. I definitely have some neighbors, but I, I live in Colorado, so there's also like some owls and foxes and stuff okay. like that. Well, so it's, pr- you probably it's a bit serene. Baby fox back to health with this habit, like <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, good. I mean, I didn't. I didn't exactly yeah. nurse a baby in any way out of it. So Wait, might a, as well help the nature. That's a good and addendum on the nursing part on the space stations, everything is recycled. Then I assume, including the semen. Oh yeah. You heard oh. about um, the them making that that type that food out of their own feces? What? No. Th- Whoa, that's the that's movie. Yeah. They with did Matt Damon, but <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about how they recycle the moisture out of the air, their breath, their urine. They they actually figured out how to you know since like weight is a big thing with the ISS, they figured out how to turn their feces into a food type, mm. and uh, you know eat it. And there's photos Speaking of and that, stuff. They just ate their shit. They yeah. just pooped it out and ate it. <laughs> but they, they won't mention how it tastes. Asshole. Yeah, but they won't. No, nobody will talk about how it tastes. So you know it's not a good sign. Yeah. Jesus Christ! I can't believe that. Yeah. I what it tastes like. It's like only carry on luggage. That's all you get to eat eat the entire time you're up there for nine months or however. It's true. Do they not do supply drops? I, th- I, I believe they do. I believe they do here and there, but... Uh, <laughs> they just transport up more shit for them. <laughs> <laughs> this is all the shit from NASA headquarters. <laughs> it's just a storage truck. Just clogged. Yeah, it's a honey shuttle. <laughs> I, I have to go idea. into this. Just Mr. Oh, ahead, Astronaut X just sitting there hoping for pizza and he gets shit. Do you guys think that the first priority of anyone who's up in space is like to go jack off as soon as they get uh, back? Like I'm wondering what oh, the what the facility yeah what the facility of uh, needs is when they get down. Is it like do they go get a disgusting burger first? Do they go to sleep? Yeah. Like do they jack off? Like what's the <laughs> very first to their family? <laughs> no, they do that on the way down, honey. I really got to jack off. <laughs> Yeah, I give I'm gonna get my up. window ready. <laughs> Dick's yeah. coming in for a hot re-entry, babe. <laughs> Clean the sink. I I have to bring this up because I was fascinated by it the other day. Um, when you, you are, you, are you guys familiar with what a honey wagon is? No, honey. No, no. A, hu- a honey <laughs> wagon. No, no, no. They're those giant trucks that come and suck all of the septic out of oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, porta yeah. potties. Yeah. yeah. But if you drive one for a movie, you get an official IMDb credit and a billing in the in the movie. Really? Yeah, I was going uh, through and finding who is like the most prolific shit, shuck, uh, shit sucker in LA. What's the uh, <laughs> or in official Hollywood. title in the movie? <laughs> shit sucker. I think I think it is uh, um, honey wagon driver or something something along that that kind of a generic title. Um, that's fascinating though because you can really see who's making it. You know who's making it in Hollywood. <laughs> Who's rolling? I wonder, if he keeps, I wonder if they keep the shit because that's Shut the up, shit of I want celebrities. To stop! This is too suspenseful. So, who is the top shit sucker? I I don't have it up in front of me, but <laughs> I, oh, I, oh, I know. Come on. I know. That is a tease. What kind of? I'm a, a bad fan. How many movies even have a dedicated shit sucker? You, you know, uh, most of the Ooh. time it's a gas tanker and stuff. 
Yeah, it'd probably be outdoor shoots. You know what I mean? Because if you're in a studio, you're not going to have it. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I think just about every film set has to have one. (laughs) Even if they don't have porta potties. Yeah. Like (laughs) he's got to be on there just making sure no shit falls loose on the ground or any sort of situation. He checks the actors to make sure they don't shit themselves on set. Yeah. Do you wipe yourself properly? Let me check that. Oh, asshole. American astronauts need this. Be a patriot <laughs> and support save your the shit. cause. <laughs> I tried to get an answer for who the most prolific shit sucker is. Uh, the first result is Buddy Pine. Does that ring any bells, Chris? Is that that what does comes ring up a bell. On YouTube, if you look up shit no. sucker. <laughs> no, I, I googled it. Buddy Pine. That does. Uh, I I feel like a name like Buddy does stand out. Oh man! I, I, would, I hope he doesn't listen to this because wow. I want him to know that I'm a big fan. I, I think this might be him because Buddy Pine has been the premier shit sucker oh, yeah. for the better part of the 2000s. Since 2004, this man has been the driver of the honey wagon. Yeah. Wow. He took a He's year off trust. for the movie because of Win Dixie to drive the fuel truck, but then he went right back to the honey wagons. Yeah, I guess he didn't like it. Wow. All this he is does the is guy. drive. Holy shit. Yeah, this is the guy. Yeah, this, this definitely looks like the right guy. Wow. His biggest break was Green Lantern. Yeah, so if you <laughs> if you were on the set or enjoyed the movie Green Lantern, just next time you watch it, remember Buddy Pine was slurping up that dookie to make that movie happen. Yeah, you know, get get a hold of Buddy Pine. Let him know you're a fan of his work. Uh, send him some hate mail. And, uh, That's what he you needs. Know. <laughs> his, his life is sucking up shit. The, uh, the first thing he needs is some hate mail for it. <laughs> exactly. Come well, on, man. That... Keeps him motivated. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> yeah, keeps him motivated, man. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that motivates him. Yeah, I'll keep sucking up these people's shit that hate me. <laughs> for my country, baby. Maybe. Maybe he's into it. I want him to get a Hollywood star. <laughs> Speaking of honey wagons, we have a we have a more palatable and better type of honey to talk about. Millions of people are using honey to save money while shopping online. And why wouldn't they? It's free. It takes two clicks to add it to your browser. Saves you a ton of money. It's ingenious. And one of the best things about it ever is how honey makes it better to shop on Amazon. But probably the best thing of all is it has nothing to do with honey wagons. Tell them about it, Jackson. So Honey's a, uh, a little widget that you can get on your web browser. Basically what it does is when you're shopping on stores like Amazon, it'll take all the discount codes it can find online, every single one of them, and apply it at your checkout for you. So you just you just click and you save money, basically. It's that easy. Uh, they automatically search two, 2 million sellers on Amazon to find you the lowest price as well. So you can like get stats on if you're paying the lowest price possible for whatever object you want. I highly recommend Honey. You can go to uh, joinhoney.com slash official to get it for free right now. There's absolutely no reason not to. It's two clicks. You save money. Get it for free. Joinhoney.com slash official. Charlie, remember those snacks you bought on Amazon? Mm -hmm. Remember remember how much better they tasted because you saved money on them with honey? Yeah, absolutely. And they already tasted good from the start. Oh, even better. Joinhoney.com slash official. No reason not to add honey to your browser. Chris, I was going to ask a bit earlier. Uh, is there any topics like you want to make jokes on, but you feel like might be a little too controversial or won't go over well? Because you've mentioned that people find the humor offensive sometimes and it doesn't bother you. But is there some topics you just don't even want to touch because you're afraid of backlash? Um, no, not exactly. I mean, we, we never really kind of go out and write anything to be offensive but we kind of just end up like landing there by reflex and just kind of the what what we laugh at and what have you there i mean there's some stuff here and there where it's like okay maybe this this won't this won't be worth it or this this isn't as clear as we want it to be we've uh (laughs) jesus christ we had one that we scrapped called uh it it was all about how there was there's you know a lot of uh uh homophobia on online gaming and shooters and stuff like that and we wrote this we wrote this short that we tossed that uh tossed away that was called uh um battle gaze yeah and it was about that wouldn't go over well (laughs) No, it wouldn't at all. Probably. And that was kind of the thing. And it was all about how people started would start because uh, uh, the game would be so great. 
that people would start using the word to say, hey, good job. And then say, hey, hey, yeah, you too. And then the word would lose all power. And it was like a first person medal of honor kind of thing where your hands are out, out in front of you instead of any sort of gun. And you weren't anywhere near the war. And it was it was people just kind of uh, uh, helping each other out in times of need and stuff like that. And it was one of those things where like, ah, you know, that's not going to be worth it, really. But it's never because it's ever like too offensive or anything like that. It's it's always just more of uh, uh, if, if it's if we find it funny enough, we're going to go for it. And, yeah. you know, consequences be damned. Well, Chris, you got to remember, this is the Internet. So if you do anything satirical. A, yeah, a good chunk of people will take that as you coinciding with it, right? No yeah. Well, what. you know, yeah, we've we've definitely got the brunt of that plenty of times, but you know, that's you know, we make a poster out of it and we feel good about it. <laughs> <laughs> you make some money off it. Your hate yeah. mail made me money, <laughs> right? And with the Bill and, uh, school of thought when it comes to haters, which is fuck them. But Chris, we do have right. a long-standing tradition here on the official podcast, which is being positive. And even though we've kind of forgotten about it recently, I'd like us all to mention one thing we all like. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this this, is, a, yeah, this remember, is a community effort for us to be more likable. <laughs> remember 10 episodes ago when I said we'd do yeah. this every episode? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we forgot about it. <laughs> Good point. That just means we've got 10 weeks of stored up like things, right, guys? Yeah, absolutely. Woo! I have a few, but I'm not going to blow my load. Yeah, we got to go and all jack at order once, anyway. Out of a window. We gotta preserve the <laughs> Jack Order tradition. Uh, what did I say last time? I don't know. You telling Probably me you don't remember knows. from over two months ago? Well, come on, Jackson. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was just hoping it wasn't a dinosaur thing because my <laughs> thing this week is that I just found out that we're getting review copies for my most anticipated game of the year. So I'm excited about that. What okay. game? Uh, Jurassic World Evolution, Andrew. Hey, yeah. hey, I'm down to try. All right. I don't care. Andrew, you. This week, I enjoyed the new God of War because I thought I was going to hate it. And it oh, you liked it? Uh, yeah. I went in with middling expectations, kind of just thinking you'd be like a flash in the pan. I beat it and then I don't care. But I'm actually super into it. I'm really Invested, liking yeah. it. Yeah. And it's, it's a really good game. Yeah. I can see like the complaints that people have had about it, like it drags on in some sections, etc. Yeah. It it still uh, falls into just, the it falls into yeah. the pitfalls of cinematic gaming sometimes where it's like things take a while or there's walking corridors of talking or this or that but when it doesn't do that it's really really good still, still the talking is so good though and everything yeah. about those sections is so well executed that you can't really fault it yeah all too much Charlie right I'm trying to think of something that I like this week. <laughs> Oh, look at Mr. Negative Your snacks. Here. Yeah. Oh, the yes. Snacks. Doesn't have to be this yes. week. Yes. Yes. No, 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 no. I have something, Kai. Something. I, I actually would recommend this to anyone out there that's trying to eat healthy or if you're on a ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting, right, really. Right. So it's uh, it's from a little company called Enlightened. We're not sponsored by Enlightened. I'm not sponsored by Enlightened, but I just really fucking love their product. And they're called uh, Broad Beans, right, Andrew? Broad Beans? I believe so. Broad Beans. They make these bomb ass slap dicking beautiful beans man they're broad beans they're high protein seven grams per serving 100 roasted calories. broad bean crisps there you go that's what they're their called. name and they come in like really good flavors mesquite barbecue and sriracha are the the best so far but we've only tried three and they're just fucking delicious and they're great if you're trying to put on some muscle or trim off some fat really a great snack great healthy snack really fucking delicious they are very, very... I have also had them. They are incredibly good. Your Get turn. them at joinhoney.com slash official. <laughs> My <laughs> thing... Yeah. yeah never ended. I've been recently watching... I, I caught up. It's not new or anything, but Blue Planet 2, and it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hans Zimmer... Yeah. Hans Zimmer, who I, I, I think at this point, he's my favorite composer, but he does an amazing soundtrack for it. The cinematography, everything... It's almost story driven, I even want to say, because the show makes you care about little fish. Like, I actually start giving a fuck about how this, like, you know, if this cuttlefish gonna get to fuck, yes or no. And I care about it. <laughs> I care about the bird. Like, is the bird gonna get away from the shark? And if you don't <laughs> no, watch it's, any it's other- all of them. Is it gonna get to fuck? Is he gonna get the fuck? Is the narrator gonna get to fuck? Is the, who's no, the cuttlefish? It's so good though. Who's he taking a problem? Actually start to care about these sea animals that you know are 
largely emotionless, creepy things, but all of a sudden you care about their outcomes, right? You want that little crab to be happy and make it through the barrage of piranhas or whatever. But if you don't watch any other episode, I recommend, please go watch, I think it's the second episode of Blue Planet 2, which is The Deep, where they go into the deepest parts of the oh, ocean. Yeah. Oh, that shit. So I amazing. love that shit so much every oh, time. Yeah. Fucking breathtaking. Some Creepy. goddamn monsters down there. It's like it's like an alien world down there. It's it crazy. is. Yeah. It's creepy, dark, creepy creatures. They have this badass scene where a bunch of sharks are eating a dead whale carcass and blood comes out of the shark's gills. If oh, you watch, spoilers, you know man. what shot I'm talking about. It's so cool. And then they have like a little sea eel that gets spasms because it swam around in a pool of brine. It's such a cool fucking episode. So go check out Blue Planet 2 and also go check out Hans Zimmer's uh, soundtrack to it on Spotify, I guess. I don't fucking know. Your turn, Chris. How about you, Chris? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, definitely been enjoying God of War and Blue Planet. Um, you've, you've been watching both of those things this week. Well, uh, <laughs> for the previous Nobody week. said this week. Where did that rule come from? Is that a, is it a week thing? I, 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 yeah. Uh, you got to choose something this week. I'm sorry. That's the rule. That's okay. I, I, guess I that's have to rule. say, yeah, um, something I've been enjoying this week, I guess uh, the, the new Childish Gambino single and music video. Mm. I, uh, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I mean, I'm not much for the trap sound, but mm-hmm. that combined with the video, I mean, I, I can't deny really, that yeah, I keep yeah, going back yeah. and watching it. The song's it. all right, but the video is very well Yeah, done. really well. That's what I feel as well, well yeah. Executed. I can't help but kind of go back and look at what's going on in the background and all the details and whatnot, even though, yeah, the, the, the trap side of the music is, isn't so much for me, but the combination of the two works really well, and I'm, I, can't, I can't stop watching it. But He's got such a dad bud. Yeah, he does, but it, it kind of works for him, you know? I mean, no. it goes with the beard, and now it's like, all right, respect me. I got dad bod and a beard. He's kind of more fit than dad bod, I thought. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I definitely thought so as well. Yes. He's, he's got some he, he, muscle yeah. on him. He's like, yeah, he's like regular skinny dude. He's not particularly That's, any kind of shape. No, dad, yeah. dad bods have a bit of muscle to them. But no, they, they're but like, dad bods are also out of shape. Donald Glover's not really out of shape. He's, he's got to have the chest muscle. Yeah, he's got like a the pecs, he's got like yeah. some meaty like some he doesn't have dad muscle, he has like meat muscle on him. I thought dad yeah, bod yeah, was like pear shaped so. beer yeah. not beer guts, but like pudgy midsection, you know what I mean? Yeah. Dad bod is like your uh forty year old man. Right. Gross. And oh, um if you are on YouTube, another thing I've been enjoying this week, it's uh it's a tiny, tiny beautiful gem hidden there on YouTube. Uh it's called Licking Agent. And uh, it is a guy... Licking agent. Licking agent. This guy takes requests, and he puts on a ski mask, and he oh. sneaks into places and licks wow. them. Wow. Yeah, this has already warmed my heart. You're right. Yeah. This is amazing. Highly recommend. He hasn't made a video in two years, though. I know, but man, the, uh, maybe some support can bring him back, get that notorious guy's guy out in the streets. There's a point when he licks a bank while it's closed, and someone kind of catches him, and he's got a full ski mask on. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's probably in jail. He's probably serving like a 10-year sentence. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, that's terrible. That's a harsh I sentence for licking. I can't, I can't begin to, like, understand how many things have gone unlicked in those two years. It's disturbing, really. <laughs> need to get him back on the streets. He's well, got to keep us because he's recording it, he's still got to be licking. Mm. Yeah, that's true. He might be out just on well, the grind no. for the fun of it. So, did he take requests and then lick the thing that people would request the most? Is that what he Yeah. Did? Yeah, like, people were saying, hey, go lick a uh, plasma screen TV, and so he'd go into a Best Buy or something. Would he give a and- review after it or something? Like, oh, this thing tasted like shit? No, no, he would just lick it, and he does this really weird moan when he licks it. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, the first one I saw, he goes into a, an electronic store, and he goes and finds the plasma TV, and he starts, the, you know wearing his balaclava and licking it and then oh it God, says he put on a balaclava in the store yes <laughs> and it says thank you for the 100 subscribers and that's how it ends <laughs> and i just love it i i Dedicated i appreciate that part of youtube yeah yeah Ian, he's he's uh no no one's out there being a licking soldier like he is uh, he has competition in tampa i'll tell you that much oh really oh uh, yeah the shoe oh, yeah the shoe licker the ebor shoe licker baby 
Yeah. What oh, is that? Like the subculture again. This is intriguing. Do you guys think we're ever going to see like liquor mass killers? Like right, a shoe maybe. liquors driving cars into people? Probably not. Nah, I, I don't think that many, I don't think as many people want to lick things as they do <laughs> yeah. have ideals yeah, against people having girlfriends. I also, I also think, like, the uh, the people licking things are benevolent. They don't want to hurt people, they just want to lick. No, so you I don't think, know that. I think he people could, are safe. He could be just as angry as any jihadist or incel. Like, you know, I want to lick her tits, but she doesn't let me. They don't, you I usually lick don't, her shoes. They don't usually like the flesh, though. They just like objects. At least with my experience yeah. with the uh, the licking mm. enthusiasts, the, my limited experience. Do you like licking things? Let us know and we'll have an interview. Well, I, I can tell you one thing. I, there's not a lot of things I would like to lick, but you know what I would love to lick, boys? A Lisa mattress. I, I'm going to drop all the goddamn subtext. I have a Lisa mattress in my living room right now as a spare mattress. And I got it and I it came in a came in a convenient box and I opened it up and I plopped it out and I put it on there and I was like, okay, well, that's done. And I went, you know what? Think I'm gonna lay down on it. Think I'll think I'll think I'll try it out. It is a goddamn comfortable mattress. It is a comfortable mattress. And if you want one out there, Chris, are you listening? Yeah, I'm Chris, listening. if you want one, <laughs> you go to Lisa.com, that's L-E-E-S-A dot com slash official for a hundred and twenty-five dollars off of this comfy, conveniently delivered mattress. You can Deepest sp- discount. You can spring into a better sleep. One mattress is donated for every 10 sold, and one tree is planted for every order received. Look, all that matters is Lisa is socially <laughs> conscious. Conscience. Conscious. I'm done. Conscientious. <laughs> conscientious. I hate that word. Socially conscientious with a mission to end bedlessness in America. Chris, what pisses you off? What pisses me off is when I don't have a mattress that I can I can sink into, I can lick if I want. And if if I want to be if I want to wear a balaclava and and have a good night's <laughs> sleep, you know exactly. Be damned. Lisa mattresses though were designed to provide better support, pressure relief for every body type. It's and for a sleeping deeper night's sleep. That's it. Get it. Lisa dot com l e s a dot com slash official. Nate. All right. Yeah, and uh, other can... musician news, Ariana. I know you're single now, so I will buy the highest quality Lisa mattress if you're willing to give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, Kaya, it's at an affordable price. Beautiful. Well, no, it, it doesn't even have That'll... to be. I'll pay any price out of pocket. <laughs> just... I'm sure Ariana appreciates a frugal guy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like Ariana, Chris? Oh well, if if she's laying on a Lisa mattress, I can't say no. <laughs> the ad's over. Just, yeah. Do you like oh. her, <laughs> Chris? So I, I, didn't, like I her. didn't mean to throw you under the. I don't even want her laying. I want her sitting on my face. It's a Lisa face. Come here, Ariana. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give do I you like a her? discount. <laughs> <laughs> this That's seat sad. is reserved. <laughs> He's taking a vow of celibacy until you talk to him, Ari. Wow. Yeah, reach out. <laughs> to yeah. your part. Also, in other musician news, Kanye watches Rick and Morty, which surprises nobody given his narcissism. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen the tweet? No, How? what did he say? Uh, what is the tweet? Yeah. Uh, well, for some reason, I don't have it open now. Well, the well, he's in luck. with that. Did you see Rick and Morty's been renewed for, 70 for seven yes. seasons? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. Rick and Morty has just gotten a 70 episode renewal from Adult Swim, yeah. which is more than double the number of episodes a cartoon has already produced. And Kanye quoted this tweet and says, this is the greatest news. This is my favorite show. I've seen every episode at least five times. How much do you okay. want to bet, and I am honestly putting money on this, that the new season of Rick and Morty, when it comes out, will have an entire running gag about Kanye tweeting? I, Probably. I, I Guaranteed it. I Guaranteed fucking so. it. No, I guarantee you'll be like, Morty, you're not making any sense. You're like the Kanye on Twitter. like, And they'll rant about it and call back to it. I guarantee it will happen. I mean, they, they're not... Rick and Morty's never been one for like topical reality gags. Like, I, I don't see that too often. Well, they had I've, a whole episode based on the purge, and the whole entire script was they're purging, Morty. They're purging. But that's purge. not like that's not like a pop culture thing. It's not like oh, Roseanne, she's a fat actress or something. You know what I mean? What yeah, is, the purge the, wasn't what is really the purge new. To I'm not but saying no, 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 Rick. Just topical. Hadn't just it, come out. I'm not saying it I'm not really topical. a free thinker. Definitely make some allusion to Kanye going insane on Twitter. I've never. Yeah. That would be a pretty dick move. 
if somebody says they <laughs> like your show and you make fun of them, come on. I, I'm not sure if they would go that. I think they don't like to be, uh, you know, kind of like seeking relevancy or like being directly topical with yeah. whatever's going on. I think that I think they would like something a bit more uh, obscure, subtle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I think it's really low effort. Have they even dropped like an actual real person's name in the show? Because I all uh, the time. Let me give me an example. I can't think off the top Ice of my tea. head. Ice T. Rick. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Ice T was a whole guest character. Even a life. That's a good question. Yes. Who else though besides <laughs> Ice T? He's not exactly a pulp uh, pop culture phenomenon. <laughs> right, one of the highest selling rap artists of all time is uh, not a pop culture on, phenomenon. On, on that van, then Logic, Logic's in an episode. Yeah, Logic's in, in. Yeah, literally, Logic's in an episode, and at the end, it's only so they can go, ladies and gentlemen, Logic. And he raps about going how he's in Rick and Morty. Was, were these two episodes in season three? Because I don't remember either. Logic's these. in season three, Ice T is in season two. Huh, I don't remember yeah. the Ice T one. Mm. Ice T is the one with the big head in the sky. Right, right. Yeah. Huh. All right. Well, we it seems we just proved you wrong. Well, I mean, yeah, that's two people. I'll give you that. I didn't but, know that. I mean, Ice T is, you know, he's going out there and he's he's got his acting chops out there. But I don't think he's, you know, um, as incredibly relevant as yeah. headline news kind of stuff. I think they try to avoid that to an extent. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying they're going to make like a cultural specific reference to it. I'm just mean like. I'm just thinking they'll do some maybe callback or idea of like, oh, Kanye is the voice of generation or all oh, like he says shit on Twitter. Do, does any part of you think that Kanye tries to attach himself to things that are culturally, re- culturally le- relevant? Oh, fuck yeah, man. He's smart about mm-hmm. that. Yeah. yeah. So I would think that that's his move. I, I, I'm not sure if I'd believe him that he's seen every episode a few times, <laughs> but a, maybe he has. That's really a really good point. I didn't think of that. That's a good point. Chris, but you have to keep in mind this this man, he loves the smell of his own farts with it, which, you know, on a Venn diagram that's a one-to-one overlap with Rick and Morty fans. I would right. believe it. I mean, the whole I'm smarter than everybody niche, which is just cornered by the Rick and Morty fan base. Come on. <laughs> Kanye fits the... The, the pattern here yeah. he does fit that stereotype for sure i mean he does fit that uh uh i mean i'm he's who he calls himself a genius more than anyone you yeah. know so he does f- fit into an alignment with the stereotype of a rick and morty fan you he know calls himself as, god as become, yeah god's yeah sake. I mean, there to, you go right <laughs> that's they, rick and morty 101 i still remember <laughs> i feel bad every time i see him Go ahead. Oh, I was just I was just gonna say I remember back in the early two thousands he wanted them to rewrite the Bible with him as one of the main characters. <laughs> <laughs> it, what, no, you, I I hate to defend Kanye, but you're you're taking it a step too far. He, I mean, it's still a stupid thing to say, but he said if the Bible were written today, he would probably be in it. <laughs> oh. Which is still stupid, but I don't think it's as stupid as they should thought, rewrite the Bible. I thought he was calling on like Muhammad to redo it. Or, or Moses, excuse me. <laughs> Jesus, if you're listening to Yeezy, come rewrite this. <laughs> it needs it's a revision. Really stupid. Either way, I don't know That's which amazing. one of these you write, but it's. And he wants it to be a pop up book where he pops out of it. <laughs> a scratch and sniff. <laughs> Scratch sniff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sniff his shitty sneakers that have awful designs and colors. Ooh, and then the book s- steals your money. Damn. When, when I see him in interviews and stuff, I feel bad. I honestly feel bad for the guy. Like, when you look into his eyes, you see just kind of see confusion and frustration. <laughs> <laughs> you really do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's scared. He's legitimately scared of regu- regular life. You definitely, you're right. It's confusion. But at the same time, you feel like, you know, if only he was smart enough to articulate himself well, he might get a, yeah. get across a point that would make sense. But instead, you get shit like slavery was a choice. Yeah. And everybody's just scratching yeah. their heads. It's like, what are you, Ka- retarded? Kanye's, Kanye, what is this? Kanye's <laughs> entire modus operandi is he says something incredibly stupid and then two days later goes, yeah, I said that, but here's what I actually meant. And then has to explain <laughs> everything. Right. Yeah. I mean, his uh, his IRL lyrics need work. <laughs> Scoopy poopy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I mean, I'd, I'd feel bad for him if not for the whole he's richer than God thing. I, I think that what he's done recently, it makes me no longer have to feel bad for him. But I do feel like he's just kind of a, a caged animal that's all <laughs> scared and his eyes are darting around all the time. And, 
you know, so I, I, I maybe I let it slide more than it should with kind of some of the stuff he says. I do. But. I do wonder if it's having an actual impact on his marriage. I feel like it has to at this point. Nah. Well, you saw that Beyonce like got a hold of him. And or sorry, not Beyonce. Jesus Christ, that uh, his wife Kim, uh, Kim Kardashian sent yeah. and you know said, "Hey, correct what you said over Twitter." Yeah, I saw that, and then he was like, "My wife said to correct this, but no." Yeah, but she also defended him on her own, you know, channels. I don't yeah, know if it was her own sweet. Twitter or her own news release, but she said, "You know what? Like, what Kanye can't say that you should be free. What the fuck is wrong with all of you?" So she's standing by him, I think. And mm-hmm. there you go. We're better than TMZ now. I mean, it's exactly what we said before. You can't even fucking coincide with him on any capacity i mean we what was it was chance who did the whole apology for the oh, yeah. thing yeah, yeah that we talked about on the last episode where he just said a fucking fact which i'm still mad about and he had to <laughs> write an eight page pol- apology on it come on well give, right. give some clarification i don't think you said it on an episode it was, it was on the it was patreon episode. oh it was on the patreon yeah, oh so this bonus. is fresh oh so if you go to patreon.com slash yeah andrew yeah. remember the long adless <laughs> episodes we do on <laughs> patreon which are full length and have guests to quickly recap to spare the people who have heard it but i guess most people haven't uh one thing i'm super grumpy about is how chance the rapper put out a tweet going alongside with Kanye saying black people don't have to be Democrats or vote Democratic or something like that. And then that that is a factual statement. It doesn't matter what your <laughs> politics are, what your beliefs are. It doesn't matter. That is just a fact. You cannot disprove that. But then the next Chris, day... Chris, can you disprove that? Wait, wait, I want to hear if Chris can disprove that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris, you said before we began, blacks have to vote Democrat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You. Um, I believe it was Andrew said, "Hey, we're gonna start rolling in a second, but make sure that you say this that uh, You're right. uh, blacks have to be Democrats." And said it yeah, perfectly. and I, I said, "Sure." They said, "This is our but, fifth sponsor, and we just need you to. We need to make sure our fifth sponsor is Chance's apology." Yeah. But anyway, to, to quickly wrap up the point, he said that, and then a day later, he had to go on like an eight-page long apology for saying it, and uh, that just pisses me off. Yikes. God, I, I don't get it. You can't... Okay, whatever. <laughs> Done. I'm over it. No more. I guess we could use this chance to quickly pluck somebody we're going to have on next week, I guess. Uh, Count Dankula. Thank you for everybody who oh, wow. reached out to him. It finally fucking worked to have our fans contact somebody. Yeah, I don't know what the relevance of the plug there was, but yeah, yeah. absolutely. Really? Yeah, I don't know, being politically incorrect, I guess. Well, should we move on to Patreon questions? Do we have any? Yeah, we have a handful. Okay. Go for it. We have like one good one, but... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this again goes with that shilling for our uh, Patreon. People get to ask oh. us questions in our Discord for the lovely guest. Uh... Chris is probably the handsomest guest we've ever had, so I'll spare him the the joke questions. But here's a good one. This is from <laughs> Sergikuz. I can't pronounce that at all. As well as Snow, they ask the same thing. Chris, what are your thoughts on your comics being placed on every conceivable platforms and being so widespread? Well, I mean, it's it's odd because um, we the, we got our first big break on MySpace when that came Ooh. down to it but i i kind of feel the same way that i've always felt uh you know back in back in the old the old internet days people in comics in comic websites and web comics wouldn't allow people to hyperlink to uh their comics and things like that and uh we were all for it we just said go ahead do that do whatever just you know show it pe- show it to people maybe they'll have a laugh and that's kind of what we're going for here and Wait, uh, what do you sorry what do you mean they wouldn't allow linking to it they would do that thing where if you tried to link to just the image it would break the link oh, oh really yeah, right god yeah and it would just show you uh this is you know like you know uh, angel fire and stuff <laughs> a lot of that kind of yeah yeah i remember kind that. of stuff that, kind of, that fell out of fashion real quick i think the only people who yeah. still do that is pinterest which is like a virus on google image search <laughs> <laughs> oh it's terrible what a cancer Mm-hmm. Yeah, I no, I, I hear you on Pinterest. I, I fucking rant about it all the time to my wife loudly while she's trying to sleep. And uh, I'm <laughs> wait, screaming wait, 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 in her ear. Chris, can you explain what Pinterest is to me? Because I still don't understand. Is it just a picture hosting site? What is it? It's like a, I don't know. I want to call it a, a, a digital scrapbook that nobody is going to look at. 
Unless, like, maybe if it's like uh, you know someone you know's wish list or uh, things like that. I don't fully, I don't fully got the grasp of it myself. And we have a lot of our comics that end up on there, and I'll go and try to read them, but I don't have an account, so Pinterest will mm. block me from reading it. Oh God, yeah. I hate that shit so much. It's, Jackson, it's like Twitter, except imagine you have to be logged in into Twitter, and now imagine if ninety yeah. percent of your Google search results were Twitter. That's how annoying it is. But you don't want to use it because you're not a, th- I don't know, fuck, seventeen-year-old girl. I, yeah. I guess I, I. But what my point was, I just don't see what niche it fills because Instagram it already kind of fills that like photo scrapbook kind of thing where you just post photos. All it's, the time. Not yeah. you it's, it's not your pictures. It's not your pictures. Instagram. Yeah, Instagram lets you, you know, you like somebody's photos and you upload your own. Pinterest is more like, you know, you're a seventeen-year-old cute girl, so you go on well, then Pinterest there's Tumblr. and you there's make Tumblr. a. Yeah, but it's only for photos, not like blog posts and anonymous questions and such. So you just go on there and you make a whole album of just cute hairstyles, right? And then those appear on Google search results, but you can't see them because you have to be logged in. But of course, you don't have a fucking account because you're a 30-year-old man, not a goddamn 17-year-old girl, which is exclusively the only audience Pinterest has. So Chris, back, sorry, not in happiness. Yeah, back, back to your point, Chris. Continue. Oh, yeah. I just feel the same way as um, kind of always have is, you know, we we we've always enforced the idea of, you know, put it wherever, um, put it wherever you want. You know, hey, if you don't cut out our, uh, you know, link to our website at the bottom, then uh, uh, we think you're cool in our book. But, you know, put it put it on your website, make it the background of your GeoCities website as a wallpaper, you know. Yay, it's time to update that fifty cent one. You know, make <laughs> it one of our comics. <laughs> so yeah, we've we've always been into it, but uh, you know, we often sometimes get known as like, oh hey, oh one that one that kind of drives me crazy is uh people will come up to me, uh, especially in Utah when we're doing conventions there, and they'll say Oh hey, you're that comic that I love from iFunny. Oh god, yeah, that gets under my skin. Oh That's Jesus, how do you, how do you even reply to that? I say, oh yeah, uh, yeah, fuck you, iFunny. Yeah, we, we've talked to those guys. They are <laughs> hey, dickheads. you're that dick ass from Utah. I've never met. <laughs> <laughs> Just go all total biscuit on the kid. Have him thrown out. Oh my god, yeah. Twitter rant. That's disgusting. they'll get under my skin, but yeah, Ugh. the rest is cool. You're my favorite guy from Nine Gag. Yikes. Uh, all right, Chris, here's another one for you. Another softball from uh, Milan Isn't Cool. Who are some people that inspire you? Oh, man. Um, plenty of people, but I'd have to say a major influence of mine, it would be like Don Hertzfeld is a big one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, it comes from, you know, whatever spectrum you're talking about, but. I uh, always really enjoyed Bill Hicks growing up, um, mm. and uh, there's uh, Bill Plimpton. Bill Plimpton is a. An <laughs> I thought you said Bill Clinton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> loved his Bill work. Clinton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with a cigar. Yeah. So he's so cool. He's my main inspiration for saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> and relationships. Yeah, and relationships. I, I, uh, every time I, I. Uh, I spill a little toothpaste on my shirt. I wink at the mirror and say, that this is for you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're watching. Yeah. I know There's you're watching. security cameras around the house. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the list goes on and on. But uh, yeah, quite quite a few, you know, people in the animation and uh, and and film and music. And there's mm. there's quite a bit. It's hard to list them all. But uh, yeah, Mike Judge. Who do you think you've inspired? Who do I think I've inspired? Yeah, I doubt he has specific names. Jesus, we'll, we'll see. Who, who's still on your work? Who do you want to put on blast right now for plagiarism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who deserves a big fuck you from Chris Wilson? A big fuck you? Mm. Um, oh man, dude, you, you, this, these are loaded questions. You guys are doing a Barbara yeah. Walters on me right oh, now. Yeah, <laughs> that's how we operate, man. TMT. Uh, this isn't this isn't a fuck you by any means, but uh, there I, I, it's more it's more of an anecdote about there's there's someone who who's on YouTube and they they do they do their own thing and in their own way, but we had to ask them to stop. Um, and I and I met him in person <gasps> because 
they they like he, he was taking our he was taking our backgrounds and our uh, character designs and completely lifting them and putting them in his own videos and it was we weren't too bothered by it but when some of our you know background artists and stuff like that were getting you know a little offended by it we decided we were going to say something because he's got like i don't know five million i know exactly who you're talking about man i feel like you do and the thing was uh we it was hilarious because we got nominated for a streamy alongside him oh and uh and (laughs) i mean you might want to strike this or not i don't know but uh yeah Yeah, we'll Well, we'll edit it so no one well we'll edit it so no one can find any information yeah yeah right well, yeah, we got nominated alongside him, and then we're there at the streamies, it's and uh, award ceremonies are weird. Wait, wait, he's talking. He's, he's talking. He's talking. He, Jesus. Jesus. He's finishing. He was finishing with the streamies. Oh, you're good, man. You're good. But uh, yeah, This podcast got... is sponsored by Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Lisa Mattress. Go ahead. <laughs> it's, it's better than ISIS. Um, <laughs> Yeah, basically, uh, uh, I you know we we just had to ask him to stop. We don't like we don't like uh, kind of you know trying to come at people in an official way or anything like that. Yeah. And uh, we I, I I walked I saw him at the the streamies and everything, and we're nominated alongside him. And I was just like coming up and saying, "Hey, you know, want to introduce myself and kind of uh, break the tension there." And uh, be like, uh, you know, hey, and he says, "Do I know you?" And I said, "No, I'm Chris from Cyanide Happiness." And his eyes got very big, and he said, "Hold on one moment." And he went and he hid in the green room in the back, and he hid from us the rest of the night. Wow! Wow! And it's like, come on, come on! All we did is ask you to stop, stop uh, directly stealing from us, and then you know, just kind of talk, talk to us. Come on! Did, oh did, my did God. he stop? Did he stop? Uh, from what I can tell, I haven't checked in a bit. But uh, I, I think he was kind of forced to by his MCN or something like that. Holy how long Christ. ago? How long ago was it? This is uh, three years ago. Three years ago. Okay, so legal question: Like, did you have any legal recourse? I mean, did he have to stop or? No. I I don't think it came down to that. But we, uh, I I if I remember correctly, because it was a while ago, he had some of the same representation as we did. And so um, we told him, you know, hey, do you mind cutting out, please? You know, I don't. And we didn't hear anything back. And then I think they were kind of forced to get a hold of him. I mean, what I mean yeah. is, could you have, if it came down to it, do you have in, like something like a copyright that you could have yeah. used? Or okay, yeah, yeah, we got our ground covered there just because you know I guess we mm-hmm. kind of have to. Okay, wow, well, it sounds like you really let him off easy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah well, I, honestly, I'm we don't want to be at, the like, dicks. His recent videos and stuff, and he's still using the art style. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just it directly. Yeah. I, if it makes you feel any better, Chris, it seems like he's on harder times because now he's hopping on the Fortnite fortune bandwagon. Oh, that does make me feel better. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, Chris, I, I I would have like I don't think it's an issue that you would call him out because that's really scummy. <laughs> that it is. Yeah, I mean, like, from what I understand, he stopped, and I just kind of wanted to go up and talk to him and just kind of say, like, you know, because I we don't we don't want to be the people who come at anyone in any co- official capacity because yeah. we're we didn't invent circles and squares, and at the end of the day, we're just dudes making dumb jokes. But uh, um, I was pretty pretty surprised by a lot of it. Yeah, Jesus. no man, I, I get you if you don't want to kept them because it, it's easy to get mistaken for the guys who just threaten mm-hmm. legal action too mm-hmm. easily mm-hmm. on everybody right, right. and like you know chris has made it very clear that he's not that kind of guy though so chris I somebody actually- in our patreon questions keeps bringing up CISO. i don't know why i, I just know it's a comedy service that went under what do, yeah do you know it used to be this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we did uh, like we do our shorts on on YouTube, and we do the comics, and then we also have a full animated series. And it uh, uh, one way to kind of keep it alive, it ended up on a streaming service called CISO that was kind of comedy yeah. specific. Mm-hmm. Same with like Harmon Quest and a uh, couple a couple other uh, shows, uh, uh, Billion Dollar Homes, things like that, or Billion Dollar Properties. Pardon me. And, uh, yeah, and then uh, it kind of, yeah, uh, the my, my Brother, My Brother and Me official kind of live action show they did was also on it. And then nobody really heard anything from them. 
nobody they wouldn't really talk or show any numbers or do anything and then they just kind of went under and everyone was kind of <laughs> like where do we go wow what happened it's a shame man I, I think most of the comics just go to netflix now or at least most of them have been picked up by netflix a lot of the names that i follow who's your favorite comedian chris because i feel like you have a few my current uh, the my favorite living comedian is maria bamford but i've never heard that name she's great she's one she's a uh, one of the best uh, comedians and voice actors definitely a favorite of mine she- maria bamford yes i'll check her out and yeah, favorite she's super dead good. one my favorite dead one is Bill Hicks, probably. Um, it's kind of a tough one because there's there's a lot of Carlin. dead ones that I yeah, like quite a bit. Yeah. yeah, Carlin. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I really like uh, Patrice O'Neill. I've heard that name before. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm so uncultured. I don't. I, I don't keep up with stand up really. I, I tried listening yeah, to. A, I tried listening to a little in the car last night. I listened to some. Chris D'Elia and a couple others, and man, it was just, it was stinky poop ass. Like it was just like the that one either. It, well, he's the one that got into a fight with Logan Paul over Twitter, and he was throwing some the zingers. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. In, well, okay. To wait, be really? Fair, in your in your defense, Charlie, his zingers on Twitter were pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say his zingers were yeah. fucking amazing. But he's sad sta- that he wasn't actually his, funny. His stand-up was quite literally like a frat douchebag got too drunk at a party, so he stood on top of, like, the keg to deliver, like, his poorly written routine. It literally, like, his opening joke to the special I watched was, there was a guy in the front row with a long beard and, like, trimmed hair, and he said, Dude, I hate guys like you, bro, whose beard hair is longer than his head hair. You're upside-down face guy. That's quite, and then he went on about his beard being long for, like, ten minutes. Yeah. And then the other one was just calling someone fat. Like, not even clever. It was just like, hey, you're overweight, man. What is this? It's adipose <laughs> tissue. But not like, it, it wasn't even delivered clever. It was just like a frat douchebag, man, that just got a little too drunk. So I, I'm going to have to say, Logan Paul was in the right. Chris D'Elia's stand-up is <laughs> fucking ass. <laughs> Don't discount stand-up, though. I, I personally, I love stand-up. I think if you find somebody that you like, you you you're gonna have a really good time. No, there are some yeah. I like. Like I fucking yeah. love Norm Macdonald. Oh, the, Norm Macdonald's yeah, yeah. the man. Mm-hmm. I think oh. he's the king of stand up. Dave Chappelle also is generic, basic, but Dave Ch- that is. Charlie, Charlie, yeah. say one more because right now you're two for two are my favorite stand ups of all time. <laughs> Those are the only two that I can think of, man. Oh, I think they're, they're fucking uh, genius. Yeah, great ones. Yeah, yeah, by far. Yeah, I love them. Dave Chappelle, obviously great. I, oh I, yeah, my my top Fantastic. four would be Dave Chappelle, Bill Burr, Duck Stanhope, and eh, I guess that's the top three. And oh man, I'm so glad you went. Is Ricky Gervais? Right, I'm so glad you mentioned Doug Stanhope, man. He's, I love him. He's, he's, he's a fucking uh, paragon. One that, one that kind of dropped off, but I still love. You guys remember Dave Attell? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think he's Dave great. Attell yeah. was fucking incredible as well. He's great. He was fantastic. He's still, he, yeah, he's still doing quite a bit. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. Sorry, he's still doing quite a bit. He's just kind of staying out of the limelight as far yeah. as television and shows. Yeah. He's just doing the, the stand-up circuit, it seems. Yeah, I haven't seen anything new from him. I'll have to see what he's currently up to because I remember when I was younger and he was like a big name. He was I loved him. I thought it was great. He just has a very – he has a really like antagonizing voice. Like He, he sounds <laughs> like he's always mad at you when he's talking. I really loved it. He always talks like this. Yeah, he's like, what are you doing? Like that kind of shit. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, people, sometimes they ask me how I learned English so well. And little known fact that comedy played a huge role, actually. Because when I was younger, at 17, 18, 19, 20, I don't know how old. But I would always listen to comedy albums by George Carlin, Doc Stanhope. I mean, they're literally the people I grew up on. And I really just grew to love comedy. What, really what, good stuff. What age did you learn English? 17, 18, 19, 20? <laughs> no, what the fuck? No, I mean, okay, well, English is a difficult language to learn as well as, you know, okay, this is going to be a humble brag douchebag thing, but people ask me a lot, like, how do you speak English so well, right? And it's not just, oh, I learned this in school. It isn't. I watched English movies, English TV shows, English, you know, I read and that sort of stuff, and part of it is just, you know, when people ask me, ask me how I learned it so well, I, I, 
I didn't sit down and, you know, I don't know, solve exercise books. I just, I watched South Park, I watched Hollywood movies, and I listened to Duck Stanhope. Charlie, why do you and think that most weebs are completely fluent in perfect Japanese? Whoa, no, I mean, no, 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 no. Basically, I, yeah. I wasn't questioning the methods. In fact, I am 100% agreeing that you can't learn everything from like the Rosetta Stone and shit. I just meant because he said I grew up with these things and I learned English 17, 18, 19, oh, 20. N- not learned, but I mean, learning is sort of a very Perfected. long process. Like, like uh, me you learning never stop English learning. did not end at when I was like, I don't know, 14 years old, right? So, I, I got you. Yeah, yeah. It's a very long. I mean, if you were a, learning English is a lot of people forget that it's not just about the grammar, but a lot of the idioms and that sort of uh, thing. I'll, Unless you start understanding the small sort of sayings and the culture as well around the language, I don't think you really know the language. And comedians played a huge role. That That's why I'm big time into stand-up personally. But that brings me to an interesting question for you, Chris. When are you going to translate Cyanide and Happiness to Turkish? <laughs> personally. I, You know, honestly, so many people kind of translate it for us and just kind of go at it so i wouldn't be too surprised if there was a turkish at least for the comic out there there's a couple of youtube channels where they dub over all of the voice acting and do it in Aww. you know portuguese yeah. and, and that's so yeah that's so cool dude that is but they just do it yeah very flattering i'd be flattered if somebody turns oh yeah our podcast but chris if you like the let me give you the basics on the middle east as the guy who grew up in turkish <laughs> if your comic I'm sure he wants is to translated <laughs> It's translated in a way where each comic, the joke is that a Jew dies. Oh, man. <laughs> can you can you do that, Chris? Yeah. How many Jews Shit. die in Cyanide and Happiness, Chris? <laughs> uh, I, I think just Jesus. I think that's been the only one. You could be missing a valuable market. Not in the Turkish version. <laughs> yes. In the Turkish is- version, everyone's Jewish. <laughs> and they're all evil. <laughs> Jesus, please don't arrest. That's an me. official statement. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, not not. I guess uh, I guess a lot of the Turkish audience would feel that not enough. We haven't had enough of uh, Jewish Jeez, people dying. Yeah. <laughs> the you'll Holocaust to, wasn't enough. You'll you'll have to go ahead and take that to your storyboard artist, Chris. Tomorrow we need more <laughs> dead Jews in our comics. <laughs> 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 we have to hit the Turkish market asap, boys. We got to hit it hard. No, you're no, going to be big it. in the Middle East if you just make a comic which is Jewish children being nuked or something. God, that's sad. <laughs> God, <laughs> yeah, it's so sickening. I mean, the funny part is that's not even a joke. Ugh, God. That's the sad part, man. Do you have any more Patreon yeah. questions? Any more good Hon- Patreon Honestly, questions? not really. I think wrapping up now is probably the best idea. Okay, we can go ahead and start All wrapping right. up then. Chris, yeah. is there anything you'd like to plug? Yeah, uh, we we are we just started a Patreon, and uh, we've been having a pretty kick-ass time trying to get that going. Using the disc- Discord is new for me, and it's been mm-hmm. a pretty good time. And uh, also, we just started a podcast recently where we kind of improvise a sketch or else be murdered. So yeah, give it a check. You know, give it a, check it out. Yeah, go check them out. Go check all that stuff out. I mean, well, we really appreciate you yeah. coming on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, man. It's, yeah. it's been a huge pleasure. Please go check out Chris's Patreon. He does. It. No. <laughs> Have a good Jesus night, everybody. Christ. Thanks yeah. for listening. Official Patreon. Goodbye. Night. Bye. See you, Bye. everyone. <laughs>